Hello, Gavin Palmer. Right in, Gavin Palmer. And I've been getting stronger for the last two weeks. Thank you to my coach. What's funny is I told him years ago, before uh, I got married, before 2008. I got married in 2008, and I remember telling him that he was really good at encouraging people. Um, he texted me this morning and said that that always stuck with him. Um, he said, you told me a long time ago that I was a teacher. Didn't even know what you meant when you told me that. It has stuck with me. And so, yeah, I think I can see teachers that have skills that I don't have. I'm pretty good at seeing people who have skills I don't have. And it's because I have an awareness of my weaknesses. But, yeah, he wants to start the Iron Man group. That's my buddy Wes. And the Iron Man group, let's see if I can find it, is out of Proverbs. So, Proverbs 27, 17 Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. And so he wants to do an Iron Man group. And, you know, I had a dream about Wes where <laughs> when I went to, and it's like, what do you call it? I could, <laughs> I could maybe describe it so it doesn't um, cut off anyone's ears. But the first time before children, like, I remember the first time I held my child and I felt unconditional love. And then I was, when I held my son, my firstborn, and felt that unconditional love, I remembered this dream that my buddy Wes was in from years before. And he... Um, <laughs> it's funny because he took shape as this warrior angel so I, I had a an enemy throwing rocks at me and I told the enemy to stop and I warned him because I like I believe in minimum necessary force I just was t teaching my uh, children about minimum necessary force yesterday teaching them how to escalate up into like biting phalanges off right but you don't want to have to do that you want to be able to do minimum necessary force and escalate appropriately and but yeah so I ended up picking up I actually was filled with the spirit of anger and picked up that rock and threw it at my enemy and I know I, I know I can name the enemy I have very few of them it's usually people that just throw rocks at me and I don't even understand why they're throwing rocks at me. Um, and then I, and as soon as I threw that rock, these raptors, these birds of prey started coming out of the sky and they just started attacking my enemy. And it's like, it's almost like angels started attacking my enemy. And the leader of the angels came in and took shape into a humanoid that looked a lot like my friend Wes. Golden. It was like, oh man. Strong. Things that look like golden feathers or golden scales. And he said he invited me to get on his back. And I got on his back and he had traveled through <laughs> I traveled at the speed of thought and now I and in the dream worlds and in my visions I learned to travel I learned to fly I learned to do a lot I learned to teleport I learned to do a lot of things but I got onto the this is the thing about an angel is they invite you now when you encounter the dark forces they will take you and drag you they don't invite you they might try to seduce you but they will also take you by force but he took me to an airport <laughs> and 
I wrote a song about it. So I'm the, in my song, I'm just a helper. I'm a volunteer. And in the airport, I received some tickets from my black girlfriends. They gave me a ticket. Um, but I remember a girl coming and just giving me a hug and it was it was unconditional love and it's almost like I had a vision of the future because years later I held my, my firstborn for the first time and I recognized that feeling and so it was like I was being hugged by my child, my daughter, that unconditional love. And so my buddy Wes, he wants to start the Iron Man group. And I'm getting stronger. Yeah. That's Proverbs twenty seven seventeen. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. And, you know, he's been pointing me. So weeks ago, I received a vision about Jordan Peterson. <laughs> I think rule five, do not let your children do things that cause you to dislike them. Something like that. And I woke up just convicted. It's like, not good parenting advice, sir. And I started going through 12 rules for life for the second time. And I was writing. I was waking up at like four in the morning, almost every morning. And during that time, I'd, I got a prayer partner. Um, Chad asked if he could call me in the mornings. He found out that I was waking up early, naturally, without an alarm clock, and said, hey, could I call you and pray with you? And so Chad showed me what it's like. He allowed me to be a witness to his, how he, his fellowship with God he allowed me, he gave me the gift of being a witness to his fellowship with God. And I'm so grateful because I got to see that. And then that has caused uh, me to enter into a fellowship with God like I hadn't before. And so my fellowship with God has gotten better. And then after, you know, after that, my... You know, we built we built the Murphy bed. Uh, I invited my friend to to come, and he pointed me at some books. Um, Tozer, A. W. Tozer, and he pointed me at John Maxwell, the Twenty One Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. That Tozer book is the uh, the Crucified Life. And so I've been hopping books, getting halfway jump in between books and I'm start and I'm learning I'm, things are being revealed learning about my weaknesses learning about areas I can improve learning about my limitations and I could share <laughs> the revelations but a lot of the a lot of these revelations are for me and if I were to share them, it would not be helpful to you for me to share the revelations with you. So there's a lot going on. And today, I, uh, you know, Wes, he pointed me, he said he wanted to start reading scripture. And I, I asked when he said that, I said, could I do that with you? So, you know, the Iron Man group, we... We want to be prepared. It's kind of like preppers. We want to be strong. We want to be prepared to glorify God. Uh, we want to transform into someone who can uh, be better at glorifying God. And it's, yeah, I noticed looking in the mirror, there was a temptation to... So there was vanity, a temptation towards vanity, and I, I noticed that, and I, I noticed that that's not good. And so 
as we get strong and healthy and powerful, we have to do it such that we glorify God. It's not for our own glory. And so that's something that's challenging for people to wrestle with. And today I went into scripture and the, I've got this book and I noticed it was edited, you know, it's a study Bible, King James study Bible, and it was edited by a bunch of Christians. And I'm just thinking, it's like, man, they, they didn't include any Jewish people. <laughs> um, it's like, it, it might be nice to include some Jewish people who have, you know, a tradition and history and maybe intimate knowledge with Hebrew and at least include them in the Old Testament. But that was one of the things I noticed. And so I'm leaning more into the Old Testament than the New Testament, but I have some familiarity with New Testament. And the thing that's, yeah, so the things that are interesting to me, so I'm, I'm focused on trying to love God. I'm focused on trying to be in fellowship with God. I'm learning that it's easier like this when you're just recording yourself, when you're by yourself. This is what happens when you see people on the internet is, you know, it can be easier to be in fellowship as just some character on the internet. It, that can be much easier than, you know, going out into the world and trying to be a servant to God because then you're entering into fellowship with the world, with humans. And then there be, there's spiritual, I would call it a spiritual war or spiritual battles. The spirits come in contact with each other and that's difficult and it can be we can become distracted and so our fellowship with God can be shaped by our fellowship with others it's tough it can be used for good it can be used for bad it's good and bad it's just a danger, it's a hazard to be aware of. And so, I get pointed at Revelation because, I mean, when you are in fellowship with God, you receive revelation from God. And you might receive revelation about the distant future. You, you can receive revelation immediately about the people you're with um, you can receive revelation about the thing you should be doing it's like I find myself sometimes wanting something and then receiving it and then I find and that's I think that's fellowship with God it has something to do with fellowship with God and then I'm finding that I should be professing my love to God more openly I'm doing it more with my children and my wife and you know speaking to God so that more people can hear especially the people close to me and I guess that leads to Deuteronomy 6 Deuteronomy 6 5. This one, you know, I told Wes I was looking at scripture and revelation, and he pointed out what he was going through. And we, and I mentioned, you know, I, I have Jewish friends. I know some Jews online that we could play some games together. We could have fun. I'd like to think of them as friends. Old Jacob has said that he sees me as a spiritual brother. But I, I see, I see Wes, Wes as being a spiritual brother for me, and hopefully me for him as well. The Iron Man group, and so uh, Deuteronomy six five, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And of course, you could try to do the Hebrew. And, you know, with these translations, some translations match up better than others. 
the word contamination came to me today and it's like we're all dancing and participating with God with various amounts of skill and to and but everyone's doing it every time we breathe we might not be grateful for what God is giving us and I'm working on that trying to be more grateful for what God is giving us and we might not be intentional and accepting the inv invitation to glorify God every time we exhale every time we we put anything out into the world and so the translations sometimes seem contaminated like all of these Christians that created the study Bible, I suspect some level of contamination. You got Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life. There's going to be some contamination. You got Tozer, contamination. Maxwell. I think Maxwell, I'm not deep, but it looks like less contamination. Like I was telling Wes that Peterson seems like he's, he's teaching the spiritual baby how to walk. And then, so that's Peterson. And then Tozer seems like some kind of middle school teacher for Christians. So you could, you could stand up spiritually and begin to walk. And then depending on where you live, you would find some religion, some tradition that has persisted, some religious stories, some wisdom. And it just so happens that the tradition and the wisdom in my neck of the woods is Christian. And so... Tozer is like a Christian path towards God. I think there's many paths. And Tozer is like a middle school teacher. It was pretty good, but there's contamination. And then and it's and then there's a Maxwell. And I think Maxwell I haven't seen as much contamination as I saw with Tozer. Um, it's it's practical applications practical applications the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership and then I think there's some advanced courses beyond Maxwell I'm interested in those as well and it has to do with it's almost like when you grow spiritually and pass through go down your unique spiritual path no matter where you were born it could be shamanism it could be Hinduism Buddhism uh Islam, Judaism, but eventually I think you can come out of those paths. It all starts to connect in with this having a fellowship with God such that all of a sudden shaman are discovering something called a chokeberry jelly that cures cancer. I just my wife's been telling me about that. And then I've I remember shaman in uh, South America, Central America somehow figuring out ayahuasca where it takes this these two plants being mixed together it's like how does that happen well i think people find god enter into fellowship with god and can heal people god can show them how to heal people and there's people i'm sure tozer might disagree with me but um and there's a lot of christians that would disagree with me but i, I think there's different steps along the path and you know you can advance beyond tozer and christians like tozer and you can advance beyond maxwell and christians like maxwell and it's good stuff right we're all like i love my children and my children were babies and god loves all of us so it's it's like it's it is not helpful for me to point out all the contamination everywhere um, to everybody. Pointing out contamination is going to be, a, it's an advanced level course for people um, who are beyond Tozer or wanting to go beyond Tozer and wanting to, to have a deep fellowship with God. Um and I have a lot to learn. I'm, let's see. So that Deuteronomy 6.5 is connected to um, Matthew 22. So 
So this would be New Testament. And I am familiar with New Testament. But Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So you do have some slightly different words there. The translation in the Old Testament said might instead of mind. The translation in the King James Version says mind. They both said heart and soul. And this is where I'm most confident. Like <laughs> Moses said it, Jesus said it, and I agree. We should we should do this. And that means learning to have fellowship with God. You can do it in the privacy of your own home, in the privacy of your closet, and that way you're less distracted and then enter into fellowship with other people attempting to remain in fellowship with God, becoming distracted, doing good, doing bad, making mistakes, learning, returning, ideally each each morning, each evening, and growing, getting better at being in fellowship with God. I guess my religion has something to do with uh, Psalm 19.1. <laughs> the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. This is what really has uh, helped me to recognize God. Um, and there's been some some... Some people have done some work which has helped. Like those animations about cellular replication and all, everything that's going on. And so as we use microscopes to look deeper and telescopes, you know, deeper within and you tell we look deeper within with microscopes and we look deeper out with telescopes. It's like every time we do it, it's just we're just seeing the glory if we have the eyes to see and the will to see, if we're seeking. But, yeah, I don't know what's challenging for me. I, I guess what I'm working on is I leave with some poetry. My mom's name was Joy, and she died when I was two years old. So my mother's name was Joy, and she died when I was two years old. And so my practice and my prayers these last two mornings has been to have the kind of sincere fellowship with God in which joy emerges naturally because I'll say things and it won't be received well and I'm saying it now and I'm like where's the joy right and so it's that's what I'm working on is is bringing the spirit of joy in my fellowship with others. That's my, that's the, one of the things I'm working on. And because it seems, and it's a, something like a revelation for me, that, and I think this is, some revelations are concerned with human nature, and I'm a human. And so these are the revelations which I think are most relevant on the internet these things that are more human that are with regard to things like you know lust and vanity and depression and um, greed and gluttony and <laughs> uh, balance but joy is the one that I just uh, have had a hard time with in my life I was <laughs> I was created a certain way uh, where joy died when I was two years old. And so I'm trying to redeem joy. I'm trying to, and I like that word redeem. And I see all of this as a redemption song, a redemption story. All of it. It's, 
we all have the capacity to sing a redemption song because we all are born human and and we and together we have the ability to sing a redemption song as well because uh, our worldviews can be redeemed And it's all for the glory of God. It's all for becoming, learning to be, transforming into someone being able to glorify God better. And I know it just it sounds so weird. If I would have heard this I would have encountered people speaking like this it was uh it would I would not have received it well and so I know there are humans who will not receive this well for all kinds of reasons and that's why I can't reveal everything because everyone's on a spiritual journey <laughs> there's a and we're all born spiritual infants Every single one of us are born spiritual infants, and God loves everyone. The spiritual infants, the babies, the toddlers, the children. What do you become after that? Maybe some kind of disciple, maybe a saint. And maybe there's disciples and saints in every religion. And I know you won't like that if you're in middle school. <laughs> If you're in middle school, you say, my daddy's stronger than your daddy. If you're in middle school, that's what you say. You're tempted to say that, at least. What'd you say about my daddy? <laughs> oh, man, that's... that's. We got a world full of spiritual infants who aren't in a religion. And then you have religions that have developed that... They're all contaminated. Every single religion is contaminated, but you end up people on a spiritual journey progressing, becoming closer to God, learning to have fellowship with God better and fellowship with other people better within the context of a contaminated religion. I mean, that's because that's we're humans. That's the way we were made. And so this whole spiritual journey, it, it applies within individually as a redemption song, and then it also applies within each religion as well there needs to be a redemption song as we notice as we become the wounded healer um, something like that so our spiritual malady ends up being the thing that it becomes part of our our mission work part of it is not all of the mission work it's part of it but we're getting into advanced courses um, at that point. The mission work, where you are, your mission is to help people uh, find God and be in fellowship with God, that's part of it. But it's also the only way you can do that is to do it yourself. You have to actually get better at fellowship with God in order to... Um, have testimony and so to be a witness and allow other people to be a witness and develop their own testimony and that's uh that's something like the iron man group we can uh, sharpen each other all right y'all have a good day um there's a there's no human that's perfect um, we're all on a spiritual path and we're all maturing and everyone's valuable. Even the infants. Even the infants. There's so many infants. So, all right. With love. Have a good one.